The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. And if that you are already a subscribed individual, make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. My aim for all these days has been to exalt Jesus. And my whole overarching aim is that Christ will be made famous again on this land. That we need to make Jesus famous again in this land and in this school. I pray that God will help us. That is why I've been talking about the gospel. I've also spoke to, spoken to you about the fact that Jesus Christ was born by a virgin. And I titled that message, the man Jesus. And then I also discuss the fact that the name Jesus is the greatest name. And that you and Jesus, your greatest resource is your name. And that, that is why God didn't need to give Jesus anything apart from name. Now whatever you can do, your name can do same. So Jesus Christ is not supposed to be here. Once his name is with us, it is enough. God has highly exalted him. And he has given him a name that is above every name. That at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee will bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. This morning, I want to end by talking about the resurrected Jesus. Now you see, it will not be enough if I don't talk about the resurrected Jesus. And I will look it at the, from the point of the legacy of his resurrection. The legacy of his resurrection. The legacy of his resurrection. Now our theme is formed. Deformed. Transformed. I didn't pay so much attention to the transformed. My interest is to let you know the cause of the transformation. And anytime that you pay attention to the cause you always be transformed unless you take your eyes and your mind from the course but if you keep focus on the course there will be transformation the atonement is the cause of our salvation and the transformation the transformation and everything that is everything is an effect now let me state that again the atonement, the death of Jesus on the cross, and this resurrection is a cause of our salvation and the subsequent transformation. Anything else is effect. Now, repentance is effect of the cross. Sanctification is effect of the cross. Justification is the effect of the cross. Healing is the effect of the cross deliverance is the effect of the cross anything else is effect so when we go to church don't let us concentrate so much on the effect at the expense of the cause so that people don't just chase healing we must always keep the cross central in whatever we do and in any teaching we do in church so i want us to pay attention to the cross this morning if the central point or the most powerful influence of your life is jesus christ such that in everyday life you operate from that perspective then every aspect of your life will bear fruit to his glory every aspect of your life for effective christianity we need to focus on the atonement of our Lord Jesus Christ. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
is the foundation of the Christian faith. It is the reason of our preaching and the confidence that one day we will also rise from the dead. But for the resurrection, Paul is saying that our preaching is in vain and we have believed for nothing. What that means is that we will also not rise. But indeed, Christ has been raised from the dead and we shall also rise. That a man who lay down his life and take it back is something that the world cannot just take but it is the greatest miracle ever recorded in history that the man who lay his life down and take it back is the greatest miracle ever recorded in history there will be none ever and there was none before Jesus is the man who gave his life and took it no one will ever do that in this world again the natural mind i says cannot just take that as a result it is also the most attacked many people attack the resurrection of christ because they just cannot take it that somebody died and this person rose again they can't take it but you see whether they like it or not jesus rose from the dead its consequences is far reaching to some it is life to others it is death now so the resurrection of christ is death to some people and life to others i pray that it will be life to you this morning we shall in this presentation look at the timeless proof of the resurrection of christ the legacy of his resurrection when we say legacy what do we really mean we are talking about that which is handed down from the past that has become a memorial legacy that handed down from the past but has become a memorial so when we are talking about the legacy of his resurrection we are only going to discuss that which has been handed down to generations by the resurrection of christ which has become a memorial usually we talk about the good friday the day he died and the glorious sunday the day he resurrected we don't often talk about the saturday but I believe that the day between his resurrection and his death was the toughest day in history. It was the most difficult day of the battle between life and death. The day between his death and resurrection was the toughest day in history. See, the high priest and the chief priest and the elders of the land had, cons had concern about Jesus' rise from the dead and therefore did not want it to happen. They didn't want that to happen. They had rumors that when he was alive, he said he will rise on the third day. They have understood that and they didn't want it to happen. How do I know that? Matthew 27 from verse 62 matthew 27 62 the next day the one after preparation day the chief priests and the pharisees went to pilate the next verse sir they said we remember that while he was still alive that deceiver now that is jesus they are referring to as a deceiver said after three days i will rise again so if he is a deceiver and he has said that after three days he will rise again we will make sure he doesn't rise so give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day otherwise his disciples may come and steal the body 
and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead this last deception will be worse than the first which is the first one <laughs> let's go and search for it but they are saying that if we allow him to rise this last deception will be worse than the first now let's pay attention to 65 take a guy pallet answered go make the tomb as secure as you know how you go make the tomb as secure as you know how then the next verse so they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard so they've secured the tomb they don't want the man to rise it, it wasn't only the high priest and the elders of the land who didn't desire that he rises from the dead but the forces of darkness were determined to keep jesus in the grave it was a real battle between heaven and hell but god raised him from the dead god raised him from the dead all the forces of darkness they didn't want him to rise but god raised him from the dead let's listen to peter's testimony as chapter 2 now i've told i've tried to dwell in scripture so that your faith will not be based on any other but on the unadulterated word of god and i want all of us as we are growing up as christians to pay close attention to the word study it know it preach from there don't just go to church and excite people because after you have said amen the excitement will depart what will remain is the foundation of the word which is life so please pay attention and let us go into scripture as chapter 2 from verse 22 fellow israelites listening to this jesus of nazareth was a man accredited by god to you by miracles wonders and signs which god did among you through him as you yourself know the next verse this man was handed over to you by god's deliberate plan and foreknowledge and you with the help of wicked men put him to death by nailing him to the cross so what peter is saying that you didn't kill him god handed him over to you and with the help of wicked men you nailed him on the cross then verse 24 shall we shout it ready go but god raised him from the dead free him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him it was impossible why did he say it was impossible because death attended attempted to keep him in the grave but it was impossible they couldn't just do that how did it happen ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 how did the resurrection happen the devil has attempted to keep him in the grave how could he rise now this is paul i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance among inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe now pay attention to this that power is the same as the mighty strength he god exerted when he raised christ from the dead now if paul is saying that god exerted strength then the opposition was strong if the whole god is to exert strength put in some vigor then the opposition was strong and then paul is saying that 
the power that is available to Christians today is the same as that which God exerted in raising Christ from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead. The devil didn't want him, but God did it. So finally, Christ was raised from the dead. But Matthew reported that there was a conspiracy against the resurrection. The same people who, did him, who made sure that the tomb was secure, when eventually they realized that he was raised, he has come out from the dead, they manufactured something. Matthew 28, from verse 11. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money to bribe everybody. I say, again, yeah, no, yeah. corruption all over. Now the chief priest is doing it. And the soldiers are receiving it. So who else will not be corrupt? May God help us. 13. Telling them you are to say. His disciples came during the night. And stole him away while we were asleep. Look at that. They said go and guard. And then you come and tell us that we were sleeping. And then the disciples came to steal him. When you were sleeping, how could you see disciples? If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. Now, when you are in authority, you must always be careful of your authority. Because people in authority know how to satisfy people and get themselves out of trouble. Sometimes you, young people are incarcerated and they don't know what they have actually done because somebody else has managed to keep this innocent person there so that the person is free. Now, if for any reason the big man gets to know who know how to satisfy them and get you out of trouble sleeping on duty was punishable by death according to the roman law so the jewish leaders had to pro promise to intervene if the story got to the governor's ears let's take verse 15 the next verse so the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed and this story has been widely circulated among the jews to this very day i'm talking about today big day is today zero nine zero six twenty twenty four up to today it is not only among the jews it is also among the gentiles Justin Matthias, a second century philosopher and an apologist, in his dialogue with Trifo, wrote to the Jews of his day. And this is what he said, and I quote, You have sent men throughout all the world to proclaim a godless and lawless heresy has sprung from one Jesus, a Galilean deceiver, whom we crucified. But the disciples told him by night from the tomb. And now the disciples deceive men by asserting that he has risen from the dead and ascended into heaven. This one was said in AD 165, many years after Jesus' resurrection. Uh, but this same deception is still with us to today. I want now to look at some fallacies and myths 
surrounding the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number one. I'll just give you five and then you add what you know to it. Number one. The main one. That the disciples of Jesus stole his body and lied about his resurrection. See, this one really gained currency because tomb robbery was common in those days. Even the disciples believed that the body had been stolen. Whilst the big men were saying that the disciples have stolen the body, the disciples were also suspecting that the big men have stolen the body. So this one actually gained currency. Number two, Jesus never really died. Instead, he lost consciousness and regained it after being laid in a cool tomb. Yeah, this is what we call the snow theory. So this one is there. Number three. The disciples had hallucinations and dreams that, that they mistakenly confused with a physical resurrection. Uh, no more who normal. And they thought that this one is the resurrection. Number four. The resurrection is a personal experience in the heart by faith and this one some christians hold on to this they are christians but they hold on to this because they don't trust they don't think that the human being can rise bodily and even the corinthians held on to this that is why the apostle paul had to explain to them about how the resurrection is going to take place number five that we need not expect any resurrection any resurrection because the resurrection has taken place already there are some people who think that of course we are christians but resurrection has taken place already it is not in the future it has happened in the past there's not going to be any resurrection but the bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 20. And I want all of us to read 1 Corinthians 15 20. Ready, go. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Despite all these myths and fallacies, the Bible says Christ has indeed be raised from the dead and that is the law and that is what we must believe see my brothers and sisters there are evidence of the resurrection if i ask you to mention one or two i'm sure you will say this one the evidence of an empty tomb would that be right? Fine. Even the angel said, He is not here, he is risen. So the tomb and the grave were empty. Number two, his grave closed because Peter handled it. Peter didn't just enter the tomb, he actually handled the, the cloth that he was wrapped in with. So Peter handled that one. Number three, he presented himself. To the disciples on many occasions many occasions jesus presented himself to the disciples for them to know that he is indeed risen from the dead number four the woman's testimony the woman's testimony was also a proof that christ has risen from the dead number five the records of his ascension to heaven is also a proof that he is not in the grave but he is risen oh, but when we are talking about the legacy of his resurrection none of this can pass the test how many of us have been to jerusalem before jerusalem okay how, let me see how many of you will want to visit jerusalem yeah i think that one will be fair you want to visit jerusalem and when you go to jerusalem and you want to visit the tomb 
somebody will take you around so this was where jesus was laid how true is that one how true is it any skeptic will say how true is it proof that this was where jesus was when he died you ask the fellow who is taking him around were you there yeah how sure how sure are you that this was the tomb so just saying that the empty grave is there to prove that my savior lives is not enough it is unsustainable no that one alone is unsustainable Say the woman's testimony where are they where is mary madeline how many of you have heard from mary madeline on the testimony of the resurrection what about the grave clothes i hear that it is with the romans i don't know <laughs> also you are methodist you are close to the romans i don't know uh, you know where it is they say it is where you don't know <laughs> anyway if he doesn't know then i also don't know where the grave the, the, the clothes is now listen these immediate proof of his resurrection cannot be a legacy of our times it can it, it doesn't it can live beyond a certain group of people because people will challenge it and you may not be able to prove it even though it is true because the bible records it so now pay attention to the legacy of the resurrection now the resurrection need to be proved beyond all doubt what is the real sustainable timeless proof that jesus christ has indeed been raised from the dead and that he is alive forevermore brothers there are some who do not believe that jesus died and resurrected and therefore do not accept this immediate proofs or evidences our generation too cannot rely on just these immediate events of the past as a proof of the bodily resurrection of the messiah because they were not there i'm sure some of you know how somebody said you and i were not there we sometimes when you are not there you are not there <laughs> so what will be our hold on the fact that christ was raised from the dead jesus himself spoke about the legacy that the resurrection was going to leave behind let's go to luke 24 luke 24 from verse 44 he said to them this is what i told you while i was still with you everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of moses and the prophets and the psalms the next verse 45 then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures 46 he told them this is what is written the messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day 47 shall we read 47 together and now hold it the word and is a connect a connect is a connect it connects grammatically coordinate words phrases and clauses the word and introduces an additional comment the word and is along or together or an addition the word and can also be interpreted as plus plus 
the word and can also be interpreted as also at the same time then again so let's read that scripture with the interpretation of the word and in mind so let's go to 46 and come back to 47 he told them this is what is written the messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and thereafter following the resurrection plus the resurrection repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at jerusalem let's move on you are witnesses of these things let's move on i am going to send you what my father has promised but stay in the city until you be clothed with power from on high i want to bring out what jesus himself is saying here that will be the legacy of his resurrection number one he says that after his death and resurrection number one there will be the preaching in the name of jesus for the repentance and forgiveness of sins there will be the preaching of the name of jesus for the repentance and forgiveness of sins number two the disciples primary role will be witnesses their lives will prove to the whole world that the certain jesus came to die he rose again he's up there with the father on the face of the earth and then god actually unveiled the church by pouring the holy spirit on the disciples and then when they were speaking in tongues some people questioned whether they were not drunk and then peter said please it is too early for us to be drunk it is just 9 a.m even if we drink and get drunk we we'll wait around 12 noon just it's just too early let's listen to peter now as chapter 2 from verse 22 as to 22 fellow israelites listen to this jesus of nazareth was a man accredited by god to you by miracles wonders and signs which god did among you through him as you yourself know this man was handed over to you by god's deliberate plan and foreknowledge and you with the help of wicked men put him to death by nailing him on the cross but god raised him from the dead free him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him now peter is responding to their question and what they were trying to say that they were drunk let's go to verse 32 god has raised this jesus to life and we are all witnesses of it let's take the big one 33 let's read together exalted to the right hand of god he has received from the father the promised holy spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear now listen let me cut this long story short how many of you have heard of the holy spirit before why is peter saying that by the coming of the holy spirit it means that jesus is not in the grave he is in heaven and he says that he has is in heaven and he has received from the father the holy spirit and he has poured it on us what you now see and hear now because when he was alive he told them that i will go to the father and when i arrive i will send the comforter the holy spirit so when the holy spirit came peter knew beyond all reasonable doubt that he has arrived that he has arrived now listen brothers and sisters when will the church and this world stop hearing about the holy spirit tell me 
Peter said that this promise is for you and your children and your children's children and for all those who are afar off who are afar off so those who are still not yet born if they come and christ has not returned and we are still talking about the holy ghost the holy spirit and people are speaking in tongues and those who don't do not even speak in tongues will still use the holy spirit to do things what that will mean to that generation and our generation is this that jesus came to die he rose from the grave and is up in heaven because it is from heaven that he gave us the holy spirit are we together this is a legacy it will live beyond our generation this one will live beyond the empty grave will live beyond the empty grave number two the preaching in the name of jesus on that day of pentecost peter stood up and peter began to preach three thousand people were saved but his preaching was connected to the resurrected savior let's go to Acts chapter 2 verse 35 okay let's take it from 36 you realize that from what we have read up to 36 he spoke about the fact that he rose again from the dead but peter is still preaching therefore let all israel be assured of this god has made this jesus whom you crucified both lord and messiah when the people heard this they were cut to their the, the heart and said to peter and the other the apostles brothers what shall we do peter replied repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the holy spirit let's jump to verse 40 with many other words he warned them and pleaded with them save yourself from the, this corrupt generation those who accepted his message were baptized and about three thousand were added to the number that day you see anytime that we are preaching what makes us preach and what gives us the authority to preach is a resurrected savior ever since we came here some have responded to the call why are they responding because a certain jesus came on this earth he died and he rose again he is a reason for our preaching and anytime that the pulpit is mounted or anytime that we preach about the word of god this one should remind us that jesus came to die when will we stop preaching when now and listening to this it is not just preaching by word jesus said the gospel will be backed by signs and wonders so when peter and co were going to church and they met this lame man they said silver and gold we do not have what we have we give to you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth now the one who is supposed to be there though in his name rise and walk and the man rose jumping leaping and praising god now listen the high priest and the people who wanted to make sure that nobody gets the story when they heard it the bible says they were disturbed why were they disturbed let's go to Acts chapter 4 why were they disturbed as chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 the priests and the captain of the temple god and the services came to, up to peter and john while they were speaking to the people now verse 2 shall we shout verse 2 they greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people proclaiming in jesus the resurrection of the dead this is what they didn't want to hear they are saying that he is dead but his name is healing people 
His name is fixing problems. So how can he say that he is dead? So when they arrested Peter and Co, they asked them a simple question. Let's go to verse 3. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. Verse 4 says that, But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Now, they arrested these people. They put them in jail. A lot more are believing. Hmm? So their problem is becoming worse. And then they ask them a question. Let's go to verse 7. Verse 7. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Let's pay attention to Peter. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, Nine, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stand before you healed. Any day that we heal people in the name of Jesus, that we face challenges and problems in the name of Jesus, it will be a legacy that Christ indeed came. He died, he resurrected. And it is in his power that we preach and we raise the dead. Are we together? If you are here, let me see by show of hand. Now, I'll take the last bit. And my interest is in that one because of the transformation. The last one is that you are witnesses of these things. The disciples' primary role were to be witnesses. Those conspiracies, these fallacies and myths we have spoken about could go on. But the surest proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is you. The surest proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is you. When I was growing up as a boy, I got born again at a very tender age. By 15 years, I actually understood the things of God. I was with my dad one day in, uh, in the living room. He was actually expecting some visitors. And I knew the men who were going to come. And I knew that when they come, they will drink. And I knew the sort of beer they like star beer not club or gold don't know whether they are still producing it young men are they still producing good and i knew the time that they were supposed to come i was with my dad alone in the room then when it was about 20 minutes 30 minutes of time he fetched some two bottles and then he came out of the house. I knew that he was looking for somebody to go and buy the beer. But it was too hot in the afternoon and nobody was passing. So he came back and sat down. Then he looked at my face. Then I also turned that way. And then the old man went out again. After a while he came back. I saw that I needed to help. Then I said, "Da, mama in koto in sanimro." Oso, David, 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 many obi, many obi. I'll find somebody. Not finding anyone. He, he came back of their house. The da, we now go for number ba si si ao. Last one, yeah. So just go and buy this one. Last one. I will not let you go and buy any beer for me again. What is going on? Is he not the one who gave birth to me? 
But you see, something has happened to me. Something has happened to me. And my life is transformed. So it's not comfortable sending me to go and buy liquor. No. You are the surest proof of the resurrection. The apostle Paul said that they didn't know me. All they knew was that the one who used to persecute the church is now preaching the gospel. And he says, because of me, they praise God. They praise God. Let them carry on with all their theories against the resurrection. But you are the greatest proof. You are the greatest proof of the resurrection. Nobody else. To, when we say witness, is to see, hear, and to know by personal presence and experience. Jesus said, you are witnesses of this. So he was trying to tell the disciples that you have seen, you have known me by personal presence and experience. Let the world know that I came to this planet Earth to save sinners. Paul says that, and I'm the chief of them. Look at me, I'm the chief of them. You are the greatest proof. A witness still not asleep and the man was shocked with surprise because ordinarily by the time he comes home the woman is asleep and woe be ties if you touch her the woman will beat the man then this time the woman decided not to sleep but the man too had a style when he comes home a bit early the main entrance to the house this one is a compound house the man will stand there like that and he will not allow anybody to come in or go out and when people are drunk they they have some uh, unnecessary energy they can do so many things so he will stand there and this woman will have to fight the man you push the man away from there and this time instead of the woman fighting and pushing the man the woman just went and then fetched the hand of the husband like the me and then he put it around his neck so oh 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 now my sister will say and don't do that you are a nice man and the man said, oh, I'm not a nice man, we are uh, typical men. On, as for us, when we are even missing the way, and our, our wife say, Oh, let's take left. A man will say, Oh, no, 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 I know the place. Until he gets to a good desire. <laughs> and then he's okay, saying, Typical man. So this man was shocked. He was shocked. He went back to drink. But this time, he decided that no, I will not get drunk. I only smear my mouth with some liquor as if I'm drunk. And he challenged this friend who he's been drinking with that, see, my wife, as for me, when I get home, the way my wife treats me, I don't want to stay long any longer. Then his friend said, hey, then your wife is an angel. For me, my wife, so my wife used to do that but my wife has changed so no 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 women are not like that women are not like that okay so today you go with me to my house so the two of them pretended as if they were drunk and then when they got there the man as usual chatted the whole place and then he was telling his friend you watch see what you soon the wife surfaced and the wife instead of coming for the husband first pick the friend first the while you were taking the friend the friend turned and then the other one said say i told you <laughs> i told you the next sunday to the wife's surprise these two men never told her 
that they were going to join her in church. But when the altar call was made, not knowing that they were hiding at, in the back of the house, two young men came, his husband first and the friend. Why? We have given our life to Jesus. Whether Jesus died on, or resurrected or not, you are the evidence. Proof. Now listen. Let's bail Jesus out. He is in the dark. People are saying that he's a liar. Let the whole world be a witness. That is why we say that be a witness by your changed life. Bail Jesus out. Bail him out. Formed. Deformed. But something caused this transformation. Let that resurrection power has effect in your life and on your life. Now, I will take the last slide. And I want all of us to pay attention to this one. The very last one, if you have. Because I've jumped to the very end. Yeah, I like this one. It's my favorite slide this morning. Shall we read together? Whether these myths and fallacies gain grounds or not depends on you. Depends on you. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pay attention to the cause always. Let the cross be before you and the world behind you and your life will be from glory to glory from one glory to another you see the image that we have to resemble is christ he saved us and for those he foreknew he also what predestined that we will be transformed into the image of his son and paul says that as we get closer to the image we are transformed from glory to glory from glory to glory i met this pastor i used to be with, the, with him in the same area then years later we met in another area but when i met him i realized that he has not changed much he hasn't changed much all these years same 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 and preaching what is going on what is wrong with you what is wrong with you because we are being transformed into the image of the fire of the sun from glory to glory so we met in 19 something then we meet again in 20 something and the man still had those rough edges so why what is going on who are you preaching to I thought you should preach to yourself first and to others second. Whether Jesus Christ died or not, you are the proof. They feared Paul. But because of his changed life, Barnabas went for him. And he presented, said, the man is genuine. So they offered a right hand of fellowship to him. Today I want to challenge you. If you say you are a Christian, prove it with your changed life. John the Baptist said, you sons of viper, if you have not turned to the Lord, prove it with your changed life. If we change our lives and there is no dichotomy between church and what we do on campus, we shall transform this world with our light and our salt. How many of you have gotten something this morning? Shall, let me see by show of hand. So what is the real proof of the resurrection? The legacy. Number one, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Number two, the preaching in the name of Jesus for repentance and of sins. Number three, you, you, you. You are a witness. Turn to your friend and say that the number three is you. Shall we rise to our feet now?
But without repentance, none of us can come to the saving knowledge of Christ. How much more be transformed? Without repentance, none. God did not bring his son into this world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Who wants to be saved? That this life will be transformed. And how many of us Christians want now to walk the talk and have a transformed life to prove to the whole world that Jesus indeed came to die. And I am a witness. Today I'm a witness. If one day I leave this planet Earth, my children whom I've trained to be good Christians will be witnesses in their generation. And then if their generation passes, their children will be, gen will be witnesses. And if your generation passes, their children's children will be witnesses. When will this legacy be scrapped? Nobody and none can do it. Not even hell. Just lift up your hands to heaven. Just bless the name of the Lord. Say, Father, transform my life. Transform me, O oh God. Make me a witness.